Tusen tack. Och jag kan kan jag ask you also the two other you can stay on the stage and ask the two previous speakers to come up also we have a few minutes at least for discussions and I hope since I'm not an organizer of this seminar I can come with all the recommendations mm -hmm. to the organizers I I think a strong recommendation should be that you should follow up with seminars addressing each of these sessions as a full day I mean this session was extremely rich in information and different perspectives and I can mm -hmm. just ask one sort of single questions, listening to what you are talking about, in particular, I mean, the first two speakers, we have to change consumption, we really must, you know, get, get away from meat and so on. And then you come and say, well, <laughs> consumers don't, they don't, they're not going to do that, we don't see the trends, we don't even see an increasing real engagement in that mm. way. We can see that meat consumption even in Sweden increased by 3% in 2010. So obviously we've done, if we really do believe that this is wrong, we have done something wrong in our way of trying to change things. Mark, coming from WWF also, I mean, you are the one of these organizations that should try to promote change. You don't even have to be like an authority and be very careful. You can be, you know, <laughs> <laughs> what, what has uh, failed? Well, um, I think there are a number of things that, 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 that can happen. I think, as I said, I think, at the end of my presentation, the role of the retailer is really key here mm -hmm. um, um, in terms of working with producers to improve production efficiencies, but also to influence consumer behavior. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, um, why uh, can't retailers just uh, promote um, MSC fish, for mm -hmm. instance, which mm -hmm. is a sustainable source of fish? We know many of our oceans, um, in terms of sustainability, are in a rapid state of decline. Um, why should there be any unsustainable mm. uh, choices on our, our, our supermarket shelves? Um, and then there's a role, I think, for um, governments and, and, and regul regulation. Mm. And it might not be, um, um, it might be incentives, so um, encouraging um, more low-impact food through tax incentives, mm. so providing tokens to family for eating more fruit and veg. There's a whole range mm. of issues. I think it's very difficult. Um, you know, this is where the system has to, uh, has to get together. Um, but with one billion people um, obese in this globe and a billion people suffering from starvation, it's an inherently inequitable system. Mm. Um, and the Western consumption patterns are inherently unsustainable. Mm. We don't have all the solutions. We need to have a dialogue with the industry, with government, with the retail sectors, because I, I, I'm certain we don't have the answers, all the answers at WWF, um, and we need to work more collaboratively mm. to find some of those. Justin, are you prepared, I mean, for the retail industry to mm. take a much more proactive approach and basically come together as an industry, if we take Sweden, and get rid of unsustainable foods? Can First, I think, I think we need to define what we mean with sustainable, because sometimes we talk about climate issues, sometimes we talk about biodiversity, you talk about sustainability in, in, in seafood, and they do not always match. So mm. if we go for going just low CO2 footprints, that might have a negative impact impact on biodiversity so and, and and consumers are getting so aware of sustainability issues that they also see these clashes and mm. they get even more confused I want to do so right within sustainability but if if I if I go for this uh, it will have a negative impact on that so, so um, and, and we have actually tried to have some stakeholder dialogues discussing mm. this what of the sustainability issues are of greatest importance, which one should we choose first and realize that it might hit on that uh, environmental issue instead. So this is very difficult. But, but isn't that a way of hiding away from the, I mean, aren't there low hanging fruits? Why, yeah, why do we yeah. have meat from, um, imported meat from Latin America if we have uh, good meat in mm. Sweden? I mean, we do have excellent good meat in Sweden, but we are not always self-sufficient on meat in Sweden. Okay, but, you, but would you agree that there are low hanging fruits? There are. There are. For, say, yeah. for example? Well, um, we could, we, within the marketing issue, for, of course, we, we could um, stand away from doing marketing of some 
some products, mm. if we consider that they have such high climate impact, uh, even if they support some other environmental issues, that let's not market those products. Why is this still happening? Uh, there is a confusion between, uh, between, between the environmental issues, and I don't think the incentive is enough high, actually. Okay, Kenneth? Well, isn't an answer to the last question just money? As long as you make profit from it, and mm. if, if you are, if I was an ICA dealer, I would of course sell mm. everything that goes for the market. Mm. I think I think the reality is that all these things we're talking about are good things, but they will not change the trends as as, as far as I can see it. Because mm. and I'm and to my understanding, that is because there is no, the political decisions and the governance systems are not strong enough. They're mm. not, we're not ready, as a global society, as an international society, we're not ready to change. Although many people realize that this has to be, but in fact we are not. And one way to see that we're not changing, it's not only that meat is increasing, um, uh, air travel increased in, in Scandinavia the last year also, although there was a year of economic crisis. So we travel more because we like to travel and we eat more meat because mm. we like meat. And that will go on, and it's not only us. We are increasing our footprints, but so are a couple of hundred million people in China. Mm. A couple of hundred million people. Mm. And that's fair. I mean, they should do that. And we should think about the consequences. And I, I'm, I am at least convinced, although it doesn't make anybody happy, not even myself, uh, that it has to be become much worse until this system is... Um, prepared to change. And one, one way you could see that was when the financial crisis hit in 2008, uh, the global society was prepared to, to, to um, um, mobilize about $1,000 billion. $1,000 billion. Mm. And most of that money was spent for business as usual. Most of it. Some countries realized that you could do something a little more clever in terms of preparing for sustainability, in terms of thinking a little ahead. And I don't know if you have followed this, but which was the best in class in doing that? Sweden was worse. If you look at, at, the, at the rules of the, what in Sweden is called the Rotav drug, I'm sorry about this. This is money to, um, to keep your house the way it is. That's what it's for. You're not supposed to do anything that could save energy or uh, substitute from uh, uh, oil f to renewable energy, but you're allowed to do that. You can ask the government and they will say, well, you, you can do that also, and you will also get this discount from your tax. But who, which country was best here? Uh, the US was better than the EU in general. China was better than the US. And best in class, best in globally best was South Korea. Mm. So at the same time that they are one of the land grabbing, the major land grabbing countries, acquiring land all over Africa, they are also realizing that mm. we have to think about um, traffic solutions, uh, energy efficiency, and so on. But these are small islands of insights, I think. And I think that we are going, we are, this is, I think that the main picture is this, three days shorter lifespan, if you were to think about the overshoot there, some sort of an indication of lifespan, mm. three days a year shorter. So we are slowly, in 90 years time, we are sort of moving to, towards death. And I think as Swedes, we don't see the consequences enough here locally in Sweden as they do in, med in many other countries. So we tend to wait with acting until we see really the wolf mm. coming. And now we just see the trees and the wolf somewhere behind. So let's all hope that we get a warm winter again and not <laughs> this bloody cold winter <laughs> destroying engagement for climate and so on. Remember last year it was snowing like crazy in the end of October. <laughs> so I bet you that cow better get in soon. <laughs> Things can happen very quickly, don't forget that. And talking about changes, we're going to have lunch now. Uh, but thank you to the three uh, for excellent presentations.